This is IBM Museum. Once again, we have the SkyCam over the top of our IBM PS2 Model 50. And that's the non-Z model. And I have the news. I, I did find another complete Model 50 system with the, uh, the stock MFM controller, just like we have on this system, and with, a, uh, with another drive. Now, I, I, we've got the same system up here with the same controller that we've used. Uh, but I did go through and I, I, I pulled that drive out just to put it in here for a little bit of testing. I just wanted to see going through ahead of that process to run the control A and low level format. You know, maybe I had another possible candidate ready for that, that process. It would be easier than the, uh, the other drive I have with uh, that I have uh, currently marked as mixed boot files um, that goes through and when it boots up it tells me the missing uh, bad or missing command interpreter just because that hard drive is in such bad shape and we even have to see if a low level format will bring it around. Now, on this drive, and I can show that in a moment as well, I do have it running. I do have the, it's even a little bit noisier of drive um, that's, that's in the system right now. Uh, it does give me the same issue of bad or missing command interpreter. It does look like it has more contents currently on that drive. And as I say, you know, a lot of these, programs and stuff like that like the uh the other drive has the x tree program and a lot of those older programs have been archived online uh people go through and they uh they image them put up there um for other people to enjoy that old software and to look through um and a lot of time, I, I mean, I'm not aware of um, the programs. I, I'd have to go through and look through and find out if, uh, if the version I have is archived online. But certainly, I like to go through and I like to save that stuff that once I have rebuilt a hard drive that I could reload the software and things like that. Um, so... We'll get into a little bit of that process, but I thought for another factor that I wanted to do, you know, we've proven so far that we we do have um, one working MFM controller. The other one that I tried out first was bad. You know, that was what caused me when I put that third drive on there and it showed me the same error that, hey, let's go through and swap the um, hard drive controller and see what that does you know i've got to spare one of those and certainly on this new system i found it also has an mfm controller that i'll go through and test but it's with the aspect that i already have one working mfm controller and i do have a confirmed working drive of uh, that boots and everything else that's the one with all the games on it and so Put together on one system, I mean, I already have one complete Model 50. And with the possibility of testing that other MFM controller, getting one of these other drives, and, you know, we're down to two possible candidates. We tried running, uh, and I've removed it even from the view here. Um, and I have that other controller um off to the side as well and more on those in just a minute uh, but I have two possible candidates for that drive rebuilding now as well and I will cover that I'll control uh, cover going through pulling up that control a sequence after we've backed up the files and tried to retrieve and we're going to try running through that process um, you know that hopefully that would go through and I'd be able to have a working drive and that 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 other controller that I haven't tested yet 
would work as well um, so that I would have a second working Model 50 system. Now, the other system, it, it the only thing it has a, additional is that, um, that external diskette, the passive adapter on it. So really, it doesn't have any special adapters. It's, uh, it's pretty much stock um, as well. So I would have two stock Model 50 systems. But I'm, I want to explain a little bit of the, uh, my collection and the, the goals I started out with a lot uh, with originally as well. Um, because it, it can help explain a little bit of what I do. And I'm also a very much into being a, a retro guy. I like going through. I, um, I like to improve the performance of the system. And some of the uh, adapters that were rather expensive options at the, at the time. Going through and adding those systems on. And making it so I don't necessarily have a stock PS2 system anymore. And... So, in this instance, if I'm able to get, and, and I've got some extra stuff up there that probably helped me explain a little bit more in that, uh, that process as well. Because if I wanted to go through and run one of these uh, Model 50s in just this modern age or to do things with it, I would go through, and I'm going to get turned around here. And you'll also notice down below here, I, I have the uh, the picture that reference diskette. You know, I was planning that for using it, for marking up the videos where I go through the control A sequence. And uh, certainly I'll have that if this develops into a, um, a video for that, um, effectively that part two to um, show us successfully running that control a process on there and and getting that uh, that drive back in good shape but i even thought this might be a chance for a little bit shorter video as well um just and you know the possibility of still having other videos that go through that that process so let me get turned around i mean i'll still leave up the the webcam view and i I have to find out if if uh, the Skycam is probably going to be good enough in this instance. Although I I'm not facing the camera, so I'm not really aware on how uh, that's coming into view. I can just kind of assume what's um, what's happening here. I'm going to leave the system up. I'm not going to plug anything in, but it's the thought that if I wanted to run this system in a this modern time now I would go through and I'd actually have this is a uh, I mean probably needs to be the orientation for you guys to read it it's a it's a it's a CMS enhancements and I've gone through and I've, I've cleaned these up I've still there's still something gummy on the top of the IDE connection but this is and there's no long block addressing support on this adapter but this adapter was designed for putting in a model 50 or model 50z of going through there and working in that that slot of replacing the the controller be it the mfm controller or that passive um riser for the 50z and using the dba esdi drive and it does have a bios on there there's no long block addressing support so this is the you know, drives uh, and typically very moderate drives at the time of um the you know even for what this one is i may have to put on my glasses it's an 80 megabyte id drive which is useful enough. I mean, that's four times the size of what's on the system right now. So that's sufficient. And so that would be kind of my, my go-to way of improving the system in the drive portion. And these drives, is, 
typically, even though we have the second connection here, it's a rather the power cables and the. Um, and I'd even have to see if that's in the right. Uh, uh, if those are right for the. Um, uh, I think it's kind of a universal cable that has no. And this cable might be reversed. It might be uh, where it goes in a little bit better. Indeed. In this manner. So I even had it stored and reversed. But it's got these little short cables. And it, uh, you know, because uh, there's not much... Uh, there's not much space between the controller and the drive here. I mean, especially in the original system, it goes through where the hard drive's connected right into the controller like that. So that's sufficient. There's a second drive connection, although, you know, it's, it's typically a single drive um, set to the master. And the, it's got this nice power tap that goes through and runs the drive. So these are these would be very popular adapters um, for the for the Model 50, 50Z, things like that. They're they're short enough to fit in that space, and you know that's that's uh, that's a good option there. There's uh, I have another one that is, um, and these were typically even paired with particular. Um, drive sizes. Um, we saw that on like the even the model uh, 55SX. We saw the Procom riser replacement riser, and this is the same thing. And the uh, this is a little bit larger of adapter. I don't have a, a hard drive paired with it that it may have come with. Although it'll operate those those. Uh, drives without LBA support as well. So up to, you know, the 512 megabyte limit of the of the ID drive. Here's your ID connection. You know, the irony is with this power tap, this thing is miles long. I mean, it goes through probably even better view on the on the webcam view that it goes through and this thing is probably at least 2 foot long. Um and, uh, you know, that's more of the exact size for fitting in that uh, slot. Now, Procom uh, actually went through, and they did even have these with the back bracket that you could use these in a conventional microchannel system like the MOL 60 and things like that. That may be another reason for that long power tap because you could have this in a MOL 60 and reach all the way up there to that, to that drive cage with the longer power cord and having a longer, you know, 18 inch ID cable or whatever else. So they had a back bracket that went on there as well to, to go in a, a conventional microchannel slot, not just for the Mole 50. And this really makes sense a little bit more on this adapter, although the 55SX replacement riser is labeled the same thing, but it's called an MC Pira. And, of course, MC is microchannel, P-I-R-A. And I've just speculated that that's a Procom IDE replacement adapter. Um, and you could look at it on the 55SX as Procom IDE riser adapter, something like that um, for, for that uh, acronym that that has. So... This is also a, a very good, um, you know, adapter that's out there for adapting IDE to the MOL 50. And typically with, with the IDE on microchannel systems, it's very non-standard. I mean, when it was on an adapter, IBM went through for some later models, they do have actually IDE on the system planer. Um, and it, it gets to be a very conventional implementation of that. But typically, 
the um, when it's on as an adapter on microchannel, it is very non-standard IDE and requires particular software and things like that. And you know, again, this is a full-length adapter, so this would not be. That's why I have my little photography brush here. Go through, pull the dust off the stuff, even though I've had it stored away. And this is a um, copyright 1991 uh, custom computer systems. So CCS, the other one is a CMS, the one I have paired with the drive. But that's another IDE adapter. And, you know, each have their own little separate EPROMs and everything else for those. Um, and I've got actually the system fired up. What I'm going to do after this video is I'll, as it goes through and uploads, is I'm going to pull these EPROMs and I go through and uh, store those contents away. And so if we ever have a, a point where one of these adapters is around, uh, doesn't have an EEPROM on it. I mean, I ran into that occasion with a different microchannel adapter today, although it's not IDE, it's uh, video related for microchannel. But that we have that code from the EEPROM, we can go through and compare. There might even be later versions or do some sort of um, analysis as well of, of what that EEPROM does. I doubt we, we would go through and rewrite that EPROM to give it long block addressing support or anything like that, but there's always possibilities. There's always better code writers out there than what I am. And I have this adapter set aside, and the reason I brought it out with the, the other ones, just to show that the implementation that there were full length ones that don't work on the the MAL50, but the, the point that I have a copied uh, manual for it I even had a, a, the option diskette. You know, it shows here on what models it can go through. I haven't even leafed through the manual yet, you know. And going through the other side of preserving this stuff, of scanning this information, the diskette, the option diskette that is in this pack, in this bag, there's the option diskette for it. Going through and archiving these. And that's the other side of what I look at. Besides being a you know a, a retrofitter, I look at archiving this this uh, older technology that I work with that I have. And going through the other thing, you know, you can see off to the side. I've got my my camera bed down. I have to see how that shows up. I've got that server 720 planer, you know, on there that I. Once I get daylight and better uh, lighting conditions, I don't have as good of lightning, lighting conditions at night, but going through to take pictures of certain sections, high resolution photos, I go through and I do, you know, photos of adapters as well for all that to, um, to preserve that, that detail as well, because you have a high resolution photo. We can see often at times how the, um, the circuits, or we can see components on there. Say if one of these old adapters blows a, a particular component, and we have the images, you know, backed up to um, to be able to restore that quite well. So, what I'm ultimately leading to is that I would have the ability to go through and have the have the kind of this this newer or in a sense uh, I can handle the conditions I can find a lot of little small IDE drives if I have a drive go bad so this would be more if I went to using this system more often and being daily and so I have you know a, an upgraded system of those two possible model 50s in fact I would be able with one working drive I have here in the working controller that's on here that all this other stuff could be bad but with the two base systems I have one stock mole 50 that I could 
have uh, operating and going through and, you know, if I don't have a working drive and controller for that second system, I've got this, you know, retrofitted machine that is, you know, that's, um, that is higher performance and everything else, but it's not at the stock side of things. Um, and when I when I started a lot of my PS2 collecting among the other IBM models, I mean, I do much more of the, I have more than just the PS2 series, but I did it with the intent that I would have one complete system that would effectively be stock and I would have the and of course, having parts and pieces is there's no replacement for that stuff because that stuff does break down, and and I'm I'm glad to go through and test that stuff and know what's good and what's bad. Um, but then having a, a a grouping of other parts that I could that are, and that would be the example of that other controller that I had out. Um, of going through and it's it's visually complete. It looks fine. It's not damaged any way from viewing. Um, and I can do pictures with it and everything else. It's just not a functional part anymore. And so that would be preserved even, you know, with me identifying it somewhere that I can show that part to say, this is the controller that's in, you know, a, a stock model 50. And, and go a little bit further um, with, the reasons that I do this stuff for. And so if I've gone through it and I've, uh, you know, retrofitted this aspect as well, what's to prevent me from, from doing further retrofits? And that's why I'm intending with one of these systems to go through one of the Mall 50 systems I'm left with. I'll go through and I have other adapters like this. And there's lots of little parts in here and pieces uh, this is a you know I've got one memory socket populated let's show you the tab the extend and on the starter card is actually and it's got a little connector down here is a 486 SLC to 50 megahertz a CPU and even though there are adapters, and you'll see a lot of these later on, that can just, you pop them into a, a microchannel slot, you know, that they go through, and that's a multiprocessor bus. It's able to go through where there's arrangements that can be done to offload processing tasks to, um, to the main system. But this has that memory on there for the CPU, and also, it's a little bit unusual, more unusual than those other adapters in that you have, and I'll pull up just the, really just the kind of the little, and I've got some of these even in, uh, still in the official bags, although I do have some of those that are out. Trying to see what I need. Yeah, I think I think that co what's covered it. And in here, I still have. Um, there's some 32-bit adapters that were, you know, that go in a 386DX socket that we're trying to identify. These are marked at stand as well, but apparently there's a there's a different CPU daughter card because this doesn't mate with that, but and these are actually, you know, circuit boards, effectively. But, you know, set those aside for now. But these are the relevant adapters for this extend board. And there's, you know, for like a... Uh, um, the PLCC or plastic leaded chip carrier, like a 50Z. That's the adapter for the 50Z PS2. Um, so, 
I'm trying to think which one. And what they do is ultimately they clip on to this this bottom edge and they actually go into the CPU socket of the uh, of the planer. So you just have that little ribbon cable that goes in there and connects up the CPU. One of these, and I think it's the angled one, is for the Yeah. So this is um, is ultimately. Let me see. Okay. So this one is for the model sixty, and it's got the protective foam over the pins. It's a pin grid array. You know, goes in the socket of the of the MOL 60 and this is for the PS2 MOL 50 because you have the the 26 CPU right here and I think even on the starter card deep in there I mean I it's this these boards are kind of tight together I don't want to necessarily yeah it's got a I can see a, a 386 a 387 SX uh, socket for a, a math coprocessor in there rather than having that 287 on the on the planer but this is an upgrade I'll go through and do and of course probably adding memory and things like that in a later video I can go through and show this to where this extend adapter typically goes in a particular slot being slot one here this outboard slot and it's a bit of a clutch, and it always has to go in a particular adapter socket and, and things like that. But it's, this is a, effectively a CPU and memory upgrade for the unit as well. So that will be kind of the retrofit. So I end up getting, basically, I have that stock Model 50. And I could do that for the, you know, running baseline tests and everything else. And just having it for collection i mean effectively you're building up the machine almost as a sort of museum piece for the way that it came from ibm um, you're not trying to modify it or make it anything different than that museum piece but then i have the other model that i'll be able to go through and you know and hot rod it to to make it up uh you know a lot more performance everything else have a more much more modern um, drive hard drive and controller assembly um, so that is always my intent with these with these systems going through and documenting taking pictures um, having that original model and and having the parts and pieces to be able to swap in and to fix things and to to keep it so that that unit is operational but also going through and having another model if i'm going to use it a whole bunch that's that's also that hot rodded performance or look what i can do sort of level um and that'll be a very good upgrade you know paired with also the the uh the controller and 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 drive to be uh, on the system. Now, I haven't looked through on, on this full length adapter that I pulled out of the bag and everything else, but all these other components as well, you know, besides the pictures, uh, when we get the documents, the software, this is also, you know, saved away on the committee. It goes up on, a, on a pages that Lewis Olin has gone through and curated for for decades now. Has gone through and diagrammed these cards. I mean, I can include the links in my in my videos in the video description, just like I've done in the past, that shows the link and says, "Hey, this is where he's gone through and he's documented this. That's where we collect the uh, 
you know, the EEPROM images, the diagrams of the cards, the pictures of the cards, we go through and detail what those adapters do. Here's the ADF, here's all the software you need. Uh, you know, here's that option diskette image so you can download it. Uh, we do that in that in our community to also help others. That you know, I I've seen rather recently on um, even the adapter I used uh, that I was talking about had the missing EEPROM today. That and I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna actually turn around. And I'll I'll get facing the camera. And I may just bring over the keyboard as well. I do have that text up on or the drive showing that I can display as the last step. I'm going to see what, what uh, we're running on time as well. We just went past the half hour mark. So that might be, you know, that's an excellent place, uh, you know, for the video to just be a little bit longer of going through. I can probably at the end just wrap up and show the hard drive contents of this particular drive. But I wanted to turn around and just and and face the camera to, ex, you know, explain on that the uh, how we we document that history and go through in our community to have that available. And and as I was saying with the with the adapter I had that was missing an EEPROM, and it's not functional in that way. And I had that saved away at one point. I think I read the uh, the EEPROM chips off of that adapter. I think I think that's the reason I pulled that chip out of there. Who knows where it is now? I went through and uh, you know it, it it's not functional. But I went through on eBay. I found another one, another seller. Uh, convinced the seller to put some pictures out of it. Uh, just so I could see what it was. And it did have uh, an EEPROM version that I didn't have saved away, that at least I knew, you know, the locations I knew. And so I made an offer. And I, I told the eBay seller as it was, you know, I, I went through and I've, I've documented this adapter 15 years ago, 14 and a half years ago, 15 years ago, all the same difference. But I said, you know, adapter is not useful to anybody. They they buy it from your auction um, without the software, without the documentation of that adapter. It's useless to someone. Uh, but I, at that time, 15 years ago, I had the adapter. I had it in a box. I had it in... Uh, included with the software, included with a uh, manual with it to tell how to operate it. I went to and scanned all that stuff and archived the software that was needed, everything else to the to that adapter. And I told that to the AB, eBay seller. I says, you know, even if it's me that didn't buy that adapter, give them the link. Tell them where I have that information at because that makes what they buy useful. And, uh, you know, I ended up going through and making an offer for the for that anyway. I was glad because it revealed another chipset. I mean, he had images of it, but I wasn't I didn't really look over the images they had. It's got another um, the chip on there is branded a different way, even though it's all the same functionality. But it gives me an, a better idea of what that adapter is and things like that as well. So. That's also the focus on me going through and working with systems is going through um, that you can you can find just a bare adapter out there um, on eBay or some other source. It, you know, if it's uh, if it interfaces to PS2s, there's generally some some documentation and things like that. Now, there's a a, a video, and I'll probably uh, show that soon as well as maybe even with some of the other processor cards I'm talking about that go in a micro channel slot. Maybe that'd be a good video too. Uh, there's other sides to that as well. And that, you know, I've got a, a, a board that has an upgrade CPU that's built on there and everything else. It, it plugs straight in the micro channel bus. It doesn't go through and have any kind of uh, 
cabling to the original CPU or anything like that. Um, but, you know, there's no details out there. And years ago, I prompted and put on the news group of the, that comp.sys.ibm.ps2.hardware. I'll link that again as well. Um, that I just couldn't find any software. And, and nobody else had, you know, I mean, there was just vague references to this adapter uh, that we found in literature at the time and everything else. But still to this day, we don't have the ADF for that adapter. Um, you know, I can go through and I can document, I can take pictures of it, I can, everything else, I could try and make up an ADF because I, I know what that pause ID of that adapter is. But when I'm going through and blindly on functions of that adapter, it, it's, you know, it, it's not going to probably ever come to fruition that that adapter would, would come of use. And that would be a bit my intent of showing that on video later on in this modern age now, where we can rely on pictures and Facebook for the aspect. And I, I do a very big part of that in uh, uh, what I work with PS2s so of getting that on the Facebook and getting those images as well. But having a picture of that adapter, maybe else, someone else has that around maybe even perhaps has it running on the system or has that, you know, those, those files and everything else that it, um, it allows us to, you know, to communicate it some form if that, that person gets in touch to say, look, I've got this stuff. And that's thrown in. So if any other adapter like that in the future pops up, you know, we have the files. We have the ability to run it. We're building on our community to, you know, to put these adapters back in use or have the stuff that's needed. So, you know, these eBay sellers, they should be, uh, <laughs> you know, the, understand that. I And we just see the high prices and everything else. And, you know, sometimes they, they're just, they're just trying to uh, salvage a part and they offer it on eBay and they don't realize with the, with the bare adapter, it just, it doesn't, uh, it's not going to be worth anything unless somebody else has the other stuff, the other information. And, you know, that information is online. I can give links to where all that is. So this is a good deviation from, just looking at the time again, and uh, this will be you know, notable that it'll be below 45 minutes easy. And it might be a more informative to people to, kind of the background that I operate from, and I know many others do in this hobby as well, of going through this this collecting. It's not just going through and benefiting them. Um, you know, me going through years ago when this stuff was on eBay at lower prices, my intent was always to help the community. I'm just not grabbing stuff up and not communicating with other people. Um it doesn't give me any sort of bragging rights or anything else like that. I rely on that community helping me um, to keep that system running or to learn more information about it, to also communicate with other people that may have the same exact adapter, you know, or by and far away, the they have the same system as I do and things like that, or other things they've tried how successful they've been on certain aspects. So it's passing that knowledge around as well. So I, I just want to explain a little bit of the background I have. And I get a lot of comments a lot of time. Man, how did you pull that out of your, you know, where you had it saved away? I've got, you know, a sound blaster board that an eBay seller advertised for a thousand dollars. I don't know if they're ever going to, they've listed it multiple times. I don't know if they're ever going to come down price. But they're going to be surprised when those uh, retro audio adapters from Microchannel keep coming out and come down in price more. And the market's just going to fall down from underneath that Sound Blaster adapter. And there might be people that are still interested in having the original like that, just like I am, to document it, and to, you know, to work with it. But for functionality, 
Um, people are going to move on to that modern implementation of the sound card for microchannel. So many of that stuff, much of that stuff is coming out now. That was the first thing that, you know, microchannel was a little, really kind of lacking on, where a sound card uh, was a little bit of a challenge to find more in a microchannel format. I think the next one is going to be um, video video adapters video adapters a little bit better and there's that's a little bit more challenging there's uh chips and things like that that uh it's just not as easy as doing a sound card on uh but it's attainable and you know then there's also the aspect of we saw in this video of the drive replacement although in a lot of cases ibm for the higher end ps2s that was the, um, you know, ha had the SCSI subsystem for drive connection CD-ROMs. Uh, even as I say, they, IBM went through an implemented IDE and very conventional IDE I've gone through. And that'll be later videos. I've um, gone through and I've made inroads on the IDE, ch you know, size, that long block addressing. So... That's another aspect that could come to play. M most of the time there, though, um, the retrofitters are looking for the solid-state storage um, of having a, a SCSI 2 SD, uh, you know, a, the little memory cards now, uh, because those can act as a hard drive on the system. So keeping all the same controllers and everything else on there, uh, but going through and having that solid-state media to replace failing hard drives. And we've touched on this before, also the GoTech adapters, or things like GoTech even, that um, go through and replace the diskette drives that have been failing on PS2s to have it to where you can have different images on, that, uh, on the USB drive for that GoTech adapter. So trying just to catch up people on, you know, where exactly this community is and where I am in that support of that community for uh, for PS2s, it's 42 minutes. So as I say, I'm going to stick to that, uh, that word of this being below 45 minutes. And if you do, you know, like this video and by all means I'm, I'm getting feedback on comments telling me hey that's great for the stuff you're doing you know like that like the video and i i love comments i love people commenting even people telling me i'm wrong or who knows i don't know they don't like my jacket or something tell me in a comment you know i can handle it um you know but presenting more information than i may have or i may have uh, as at times present incorrect information that they have more up-to-date information go through correct me online i'm my ego is small enough i can handle it and you know i'm interested in getting people participating in the community of of growing that community having more people involved uh it'd also be nice for more subscribers to my channel so you know if you haven't done so already please subscribe please invite others that you know that are in a very similar hobby um, to subscribe as well. I would really love that. But um, that's all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.